Hi, everybody. Welcome to another special episode of Storied San Francisco. I'm Jeff. A couple of days ago on this show, Chronicle journalist Kevin Fagan told you all about his latest project, The Untold Story of the Doodler, a new documentary podcast series from Ugly Duckling Films. On his show, Kevin dives into the archive of his paper and the San Francisco Police Department in search of a serial killer known for drawing portraits of his victims. This killer, known as the Doodler, targeted his attacks against gay men in the Bay Area between 1974 and 1975. He brutally beat and murdered at least five gay men and got away with it all due to little evidence and lack of attention from the media and the police at the time. SFPD reopened the case in 2018, and it's still ongoing today. Police believe the doodler is still alive, and they've released an age-progressed sketch of the suspect, which you can see along with this podcast. Follow this new hunt for a forgotten serial killer, and subscribe to The Doodler on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen. Take care, and we'll see you here on Storied San Francisco next week. This emergency call was made on the night of January 27th, 1974. Forty-six years later, I'm standing on Ocean Beach at the spot where that body was found. And we're standing here at 48th and uh, Yaloa. It would have been right across from where we are. With me is Dan Cunningham, an investigator with the SFPD. At some point, when the police got there, the tide was rising, and his body was getting hit by the, the tide. To police in the 70s, right away it was clear that this was a murder victim. The San Francisco Examiner identified him two days later, towards the back, on page 42. Here's Dan Cunningham. Gerald Cavanaugh, who was a a Canadian man, uh, 49, 50 years old. The paper said that Gerald Cavanaugh was a furniture finisher. Whoever killed him had stabbed him 17 times in the chest, the back, and the stomach. 17 times. The article didn't include much other information. In fact, it was soliciting leads. Police provided a phone number for readers to call. So there, there's people that are out there that were uh, terrified, terrified when they start bringing it back up again and talking about it. It was almost like they don't want me to come by to talk about it because all these feelings came back up again. Cunningham was in high school when Kavanaugh was found on this beach. But today, he's the guy tasked with this cold case and the cases of four other dead men, maybe more. All of them are linked to one suspected killer. Dan and I have been in touch for about two years. We trade information, but Dan can't give me too much. Technically, the investigation is still active. I'm Kevin Fagan. I've been a reporter at the San Francisco Chronicle for 28 years. I've covered the Zodiac, William the Freeway Killer Bonin and the Unabomber. I lived on the streets of San Francisco for six months to understand the struggles of the homeless. I care about the forgotten and the marginalized people at the heart of this city. And there's one case, one unsolved case, that still angers me, confounds me. Between 1974 and 1975, San Francisco was victimized by one of the most prolific killers of gay men in modern history. Police still don't know who this killer was, but they do know how he did what he did. He preyed on people in queer neighborhoods across the city, in the Tenderloin, Polk Gulch, and the Castro. He went to gay bars, places with disco music blasting and men dancing. They say this killer watched them, maybe while leaned up against the bar or sitting in the corner of the room. He'd pick someone, then he would draw sketching their portrait on a cocktail napkin. Once he showed that man their picture, they were his. 
The killer would tell his target that he wanted to go somewhere more private. They'd leave the crowded bar behind, and the next morning, the man he had sketched was dead. And that's how this killer earned his name, the Doodler. Most people in San Francisco at the time never even heard about the Doodler. His murders weren't headline news. They were missed by the mainstream media, relegated to the back pages of the San Francisco Chronicle. The Doodler didn't even make it into the paper by name until January of 1976, well after his last victim was identified. The question is, why? There was a lot of stuff going on. There was Zebra, there was Zodiac, there was Doodler. So there were a lot of mysterious, random murders. I feel like it was overlooked, maybe just because it had to do with the gay population. People were getting mugged, people were getting harassed, people were getting beaten. And the Doodler took it to another level, is that he was killing people and getting away with it because the police didn't, to be honest with you, care. It's been 46 years since the Doodler lurked in San Francisco. And it might seem strange that a prolific murderer went unnoticed for so long, but police at the time didn't have all the information, tools, and context at our disposal today. And that's why, to get to the bottom of this case, I have to go back to the beginning. That's what this podcast is all about, putting together what the cops have already found with a new investigation, mine. I want to chase down the doodler, talk to victims' families, friends, anyone who will get me closer to understanding what happened all those years ago. This story stretches from Concord, California to Bamberg, Germany. I've interviewed retired investigators, online sleuths, drag queens, and queer historians. I've talked to sisters and daughters, and I'm still chasing leads on one anonymous actor and a foreign diplomat involved in the case. This is by no means open and shut. Listen to this series carefully and let us know if anything you hear in this show jogs a memory of yours. We've got a police sketch on our website, thedoodlerpod.com. And if you've got a tip, you can call us at 415-570-9299. From the San Francisco Chronicle, Ugly Duckling Films, and Neon Hum Media, this is the untold story of The Doodler. Don't forget to subscribe to The Doodler wherever you get podcasts. Episodes 1 and 2 are up now. And check back here next week for the official start of Season 4. Our guest will be none other than the PA announcer for the Giants, Rennell Brooks-Moon. Music for the podcast was produced, performed, and curated by Otis McDonald. Original photography is by Michelle Kilfeather. Aaron Lim of Bitch Talk Podcast is our contributing producer. The show is produced and hosted by me, Jeff Hunt. Now in our fourth season, we have nearly 150 episodes available on our website, storiedsf.com, or wherever you listen to podcasts. If you can, subscribe, rate, and review our show so that we can reach even more folks. And if you'd like to drop us an old-fashioned email, we'd love it. The address is storiedsf at gmail.com. Thanks for listening. Stay safe, stay strong, stay healthy, and we'll see you next time. This podcast is a proud member of the BFF.FM podcast network. Learn more at podcasts.bff.fm. BFF.FM, best frequencies forever.